Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Maha Wakarbik and you are watching Versatile Dr. Maha. So guys, firstly let me wish you all a very happy Doctor's Day 2020 to all the lovely doctors out there and all the warriors. This year Doctor's Day should be acknowledged even more because we all know given the current scenario, doctors are working so hard and tirelessly, especially those who are working as frontline COVID warriors. So it is imperative that we pay our respects and acknowledge this day even more. And on this day, I'm back with another health video of mine and today we are going to talk about tetanus. What is a tetanus? A slight briefing about tetanus and do you need tetanus vaccination every time you get injured? So we'll be talking about that and before we proceed any further, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and hit the bell icon so that every time I post a video, you get a notification. Also, share this video as much as possible so that we can clear out some myths about tetanus vaccination. So let's get started. So what is tetanus? Tetanus is a disease which is manifested by skeletal muscle contractions and also our autonomic nervous system gets affected. It is caused by a bacteria called Clostridium tetani. Now this bacteria is found in many many places. It is there in the environment on different surfaces and this bacteria it resists boiling, it resists many disinfectants so you know that is why it becomes so difficult to kill this particular spore. So when the spore it gets inside our body through different sources and let me also tell you that it is found in the intestinal system of some animals and that is why if an animal bites us we also have to get tetanus shot at that point of time. So let's talk about the incubation period of tetanus. Now what exactly is an incubation period? Incubation period means the time at which you get an injury from that time to the point where first symptom starts to appear, that, that, that gap is called as incubation period. And that ranges from 3 to 21 days. And on an average, we take it as around 10 days. So what happens is a lot of people, you know, they ask some questions that uh, I was injured around a month back and should I now take a, you know, a tetanus shot? So, you know, <laughs> then it's not necessary because the incubation period is already done and maybe that person was already immunized and that is why that person did not develop any symptom. So, we'll come to that later on. Firstly, let us also discuss about the clinical features and I'll show you the symptoms in a diagram. Now, to understand the clinical manifestations of tetanus, let us first understand this picture. Now, as you guys can see, this here is the picture of a bacteria that is Clostridium tetani causing tetanus. This bacteria definitely gains entry in our body from wounds. Like you guys can see here, this is the small wound and from here, the bacteria enters. Now the symptoms, it can happen in two forms. One, it, is, it happens locally and others, it could be generalized. Now, if the symptoms they appear locally, it means it is a mild form of the disease. And usually, if suppose the person is injured in this region, then all the tightness and contraction will be seen in this region. But in generalized cases, that is a severe form, the, this bacteria, it travels from the nerves, like you guys can see, and it enters the nervous system over here. Now, once the bacteria has entered over here in our nervous system, then it will lead to the tightness and contractions of the muscle all over the body. Now, if you guys can see over here in this picture, this man, he is not smiling. Here, what, hap what is happening is all the muscles of the jaw and neck are affected. And all these muscles have gone into contraction and then, you know, it is appearing as a smiling face. This is called as rhesus sardonicus. And here, if you guys can see the whole body, how it has spasm, you can see. The whole body has gone into spasm and this body is in the form of a bow. It's arching like this. And this is called as opisthotonus. So these are some really severe cases of tetanus. And apart from this, some other general symptoms include fever, high blood pressure, difficulty in swallowing, sweating, and that's all. Okay, so that was all about the clinical features and manifestation of tetanus. Now let's talk about vaccination. Now vaccination is given in a primary form and it is given to everyone because vaccination is, you know, uh, because tetanus is 100% preventable by vaccination. Now, the primary vaccination is given during infancy. It is given at 6 weeks, 10 weeks, 14 weeks. And after that, a booster is given at 1 and a half years of age. And again, a second booster at 5 years of age. So, during this time, the vaccination which we are giving is in the form of DTP. That is diphtheria, tetanus and pertussis. So, this is given together and uh, tetanus toxoid is given during this point of time. Now, after 5 years of age, we again give a Tdap 
at 10 years of age. Now what is Tdap? Tdap is tetanus and acellular proparthesis. So that is what we are giving at 10 years of age. Now once the person has received this primary immunization, the person is safe from tetanus for another 10 years of life. Now what happens is, if a child gets injured at around 7 years of age or 8 years of age, and if that baby has already received his or her primary immunization, then that baby does not require a tetanus shot, even if the baby gets injured. And if a person who is immunized and gets an injury at around 15 years of age or 16 years of age, again that person do not need a vaccination because that person was already vaccinated at 10 years of age. Now suppose, the person has received primary vaccination and the person has also received basic vaccination at 10 years of age and that person gets hurt at around 22 or 23 years of age then that person should get a tetanus toxoid again because he because that person has crossed more than 10 years so you do not need a tetanus vaccination if you get hurt at less than 10 years of gap but if a person gets hurt at around 21 years of age or 22 years of age and that person did not receive another dose of tetanus then definitely that person needs to be immunized so what happens is if a person gets infected, now what happens if a person gets injured or if a dog bites or if a cat bites, regarding tetanus vaccination, the person does not need tetanus if the person has all the primary vaccinations. Now let us also talk about two different types of wounds. Sometimes a person gets a clean wound, right? Like we are chopping some vegetables and you get a cut with a knife or you get a cut with a blade. So that is a clean wound. Now suppose a person has met with an accident, a road traffic accident and the person's whole arm is abraded and the wound is a very dirty wound. So in that case also if the person has received a primary immunization and the person has been vaccinated within 10 years, within the last 10 years, right, then the person does not need a tetanus toxoid, does not need a vaccination but the person who is having a dirty wound that person will have to require a tetanus immunoglobulin that is a passive vaccination so that is required now sometimes you know you have some people who come to who come to you and say that i am not sure if i have got a tetanus vaccination and i don't know about my immunization status so if a person does not know of his or her immunization status then at that point of time what you need to do you will definitely give the tetanus toxoid to that person and they will receive two shots of tetanus at four weeks apart. So that was about normal adults. Now let's talk about once a woman is pregnant and the woman receives tetanus vaccination and that tetanus shot which a woman receives at four weeks apart that is for the baby, not for the mother. That tetanus vaccination is for the baby to prevent neonatal tetanus. And if that pregnant lady suppose after delivering a baby she did she gets injured or something happens then again that woman will not require any shot of tetanus vaccination because she was already immunized while she was pregnant so i hope you all have gotten a clear picture as to when to get a tetanus shot and when to not so so before leaving let me summarize it again if uh, if it you know causes any sort of confusion if a person has basic immunization against tetanus, the person does not need a tetanus shot as long as it is within the range of 10 years. If a person has, yes, yes, if a person did receive a tetanus shot 10 years back and has been more than 10 years and then the person is injured, then the person will have to take a tetanus shot, that is there. So I hope you guys found this video useful. That was it from my side on tetanus and Guys, do share this video to break some myths because a lot of people do not know about this and there are some doctors also who are not very sure of tetanus vaccination and every time a person comes with an injury, they tend to give a tetanus vaccination. So guys, share this video as much as possible so that people know and people get more aware. So that was it from my side guys. I hope you found this video useful and if you guys like this video, then do let me know in the comment section and if there are any questions, then you guys can ask those questions as well. So that was it guys and I'll see you in another fun video of mine. Till then, take care you guys. Bye.